everybody. Good morning. <laughs> we have got two days, 48 Wait. hours. He's got mud on your face. <laughs> Hello everybody, we have got two days, so 48 hours to get Lottie ready for Yian's challenge. Um, so there's a few things we've got left to get done. Um, so it's going to be a big two days. Just a few. Just a few, let me show you. Okay, so to get Lottie in, in a livable state in uh, 48 hours, we need to complete the gas installation, the solar, our battery to battery charger, 240 volt system. Uh, so we've got a bit on our plate. No time to stand around the chat, let's get going. Hello everybody, welcome to Heather's about to blow a gasket, 24 hours. Hello everybody, let's watch you swat around for two days. Come on. I literally spent your weight if you doubt. What are you doing under there? Go here. Wrong. Oh, yeah, you put it in the wrong place. I haven't put it in the wrong place. I've put it in the right place. That's not where we had planned to put it. We can't I put know it here. where we had planned to put it. Is the exhaust not there? No. Why do you think I'm stupid? Because you do <laughs> stupid things all the time. Oh my god, this, I don't know how I'm going to survive this next two weeks. This is going to freaking stress me the hell out. Right, explain to me now why you decided to go and change my plan. <laughs> Your plan? Yeah, my plan. You never planned the gas anyway. I did plan the gas well, over there. It. Okay, yes, it actually does make sense. Yes, really much more sense. Yeah. It's in Does between. It fit? Yes, in between the axles. Are you sure? So the weight is in between the axles because I did, did this with Tom to make sure it was in the right place. Um, now that Tom is giving it seal of approval, I have a lot more faith. The weight of the vehicle, quite often they fail, not on the total body weight, but on axle weight. So there's a certain weight limit that has to be on each axle. So if it's overloaded on the front or the back, your vehicle can still fail, even if it's under the total body weight. And because we've got the water tank behind these axles, so there's going to be a good amount of weight yeah. on the back axles already. So we want to try and make sure all the rest of the weight goes in the middle. This tank, when I ordered it, didn't from Gasset. So Gasset is where you get the um, tanks with the electronic solenoid. And what it does is it allows you to switch the gas off remotely from inside the vehicle. So you don't have to come down and do it on this kind of panel in here. Um, so the one thing it didn't come with um, was brackets to mount it underneath because it comes with these kind of feet here. But for us, um, the feet don't match kind of the spacings of our, our chassis. Chassis beams. So, um, yeah, so we bought these. You can find these pretty easily actually and it wasn't that expensive. Um, so you just find out what the circumference of your tank is and then you find ones to match and that just comes with the two U-shaped brackets. I think that's what you look up, U-shaped bracket. And it comes with some bolts as well and um, that your tank just fits into nice and easy because it's super light and um, snuggles on in there. We're yet to find out if it's easy. And also yet to find out if it fits. Well, yeah, you'll see. You'll see if it's easy. Ooh. Hopefully this tank fits in this new position. Let's go bodge your job then. The iron style. This is what I was talking about earlier, which is the electrical solenoid. solenoid. Yeah. Well, okay. As far as I'm aware, we could both be wrong. But <laughs> we sure could it's a solenoid. both be wrong. Okay, now that I've helped Jan with that, he can finish off the gas. I'm going to focus on getting the battery to battery charger hooked up over the solar because we're going to be driving loads on this challenge. And as long as we've got that in place, our battery should stay, should stay topped up. Oh my god, I cannot speak today. So, mm, time to get inside, get that hooked up. He's left this place in shit today, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to get a hoover out here to get this electrical system done. Look at this. Tools everywhere, sawdust everywhere. Not a chance. Okay, I've just given everything a good hoover. Now I'm back to my station. I'm gonna be doing this first, and then I've got time. The solar charger, okay. Just watching a handy little video from, give him the credit. John and Mandy on um, installing this DC to DC isolated charger, which is the one that I have, which means it also has a wire that connects to the chassis and um, 
positive and up. negative feed from Let's your starter battery. Mm -hmm. So the actual vehicle's battery. Run it from here, obviously, to the, to our starter battery. Now, if you can uh, have a look, that would mean if I was to run it inside, it would need to run all the way outside the room, through the pass-through, through the footwell, into the battery. So that's a bit silly. So what I'm going to do instead, connect the input positive and negative here, and drill a hole through the ground, pass it underneath the vehicle, and then pop up through the bottom of the bonnet. Um, I connected that way. So first I just need to watch John and Mandy and figure this out. Just been to check where that landed inside and it was in the perfect place. So it's gonna pull. So Yan and I have swapped jobs. I got all of that mess nest of wire down through the floor and Yain is now running it essentially from where he is now all the way forward to the battery which is just in there. I am taking over on Team Gas, Team Gas it, and putting in the fill point. So all systems go here on Team Lottie. To the engine bay. Aha, uh -huh, I can see you. Can you see the cables? <laughs> yeah. Can you reach them? Yeah. If you stop moving them, maybe. Are you holding them? You just need to keep pulling. Okay. So I tell you to stop. Okay, that's all you got. That should be enough if it only needs to go to the battery. Make my way out of here now. Cool. <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> you look pretty cozy. <laughs> Champion! Smooth. smooth, yeah, real smooth, real cool. That was hard. <laughs> So after running these two wires through the engine bay, I've connected negative to the negative port of my battery, positive to positive port of my battery. I'm just gonna whack this cover back on. So now, what I'm hoping is when I go back now to my battery to battery charger, I will see a light on. <sighs> Fingers crossed. This is the light I was expecting to see on uh, and nothing. So, I wonder why that's not turning on. We're dumb dumb. We're gonna give you a few seconds to see if you can figure out what's wrong in this picture and why that light might not be working. You ready? <laughs> this little Bluetooth light is now flashing. The breaker wasn't connected. Um, so that's flashing for me now. So now I'm gonna see if I can connect my phone to that and do the firmware updates that this needs. So I've just connected the battery at negative and positive and now for the final piece this little green gadget in she goes and now I'm ready to take my first thing off the board that should be working now battery to battery done but you're really great at making sandwiches I hope everyone heard that sexism. Asking me to make sandwiches. He makes a really good BLT. <laughs> <laughs> Want the apples are at work? 
Go make lunch. You're a BLB. Big lazy bitch. Bye, Felicia. Hey, baby. Hi, baby. Are you going to help? Are you going to screw this for me? Are you going to help me? Oh, you're going to help as well. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Okay, I am taking back over gas, so Heather has kindly cut this hole for me uh, and we've put the fill point in, which you saw her do, and that just disconnects like that, very simple. Uh, now from there, all I've done is connected this fill hose uh, and it just connects with, this is what's going on the other end, um, these, which are very, very simple, just little... Uh, uh, like gas connectors and they just screw on to the pipe and they screw on to this end Cool, so once it's connected to the top up here I'm just going to run the cable through this hole here and make sure I've got the right length and then I'm going to cut it connect it with this connector uh, and then that'll be our inlet done uh, now it's time to work on the kind of outlet side uh, so what I need to do is essentially run some pipe from here through this regulator um, which again is very simple, there's even a little arrow that tells you where the inlet is. Um, so we need to go a little bit of copper pipe into the inlet of this regulator, out of the outlet, and then that pipe that comes out of the outlet will then run up to our services. Um, so in theory, fairly simple. Okay, so we now have the output done. So essentially, we've got our pigtail, which is what this is called, um, here, this pipe. Um, and we ordered all of this from Gasset, like I think Heather has already said. Um, so this pigtail kind of came with our system that we got. Um, so it's just uh, another nice kind of self-tightening thread that you just screw on here. I ran the pipe, it's a flexible pipe, um, and we ordered it a little bit long, so I ran it through this part of the tank, around the back, back through, and then up here, uh, and then connected it to the regulator. Um, again, just real nice, simple thread. Uh, and I've mounted the regulator to our floor of our van. Uh, and then this outlet here is where our copper pipe is now going to run through here, up into the roof and up to our things. <laughs> things that we need to use gas for. Is it caught on something? No, I'm, but I'm having to bend it as you're pushing. So you're gonna have to keep, just keep wiggling and pushing. Okay, and the final step for our gas was to take from our relay, here. So from our relay, we needed to run some pipe up to the van, which I'm hoping if this more, so there we go, you can see it right back here. Um, so that's just a hole that we drilled through the floor and that connects through there. So now we have gas coming into the van. I just need to essentially run some T-junctions. So I just need to run a T-junction from here and into this and then one up to our oven. And then that is gas complete. Yay! Okay, so we've done a couple of things. The gas now comes in here from the floor uh, and we've got a kind of isolating valve just here uh, and then that runs into our boiler. So that's one system done. And then we've got a T-junction just here. Uh, and that runs, or is going to run once I put some pipe in, uh, through my little hole, all the way over to my oven. And that'll be the two gas parts done. Uh, and that'll be gas complete, as long as there's no leaks. Uh, and then what I've also done is, I've just ran some blue pipe from my water boiler up to my tap joint, joint and hot. Uh, and so now those run up to our tap. So in theory, we've now got hot and cold water that comes from our tap and some gas to go to our boiler. So all of that actually, well, in theory, works. <laughs> I love the way you preface everything now with in theory because in practice, nothing works. <laughs> all of my yeah, stuff works. No way. <laughs> in theory, this is how it was meant to be done. But in practice... What's she talking about? Oh. Just up there taking a nap, huh? Criticizing my work. Mm -hmm. yeah, You're just on the bed. Jay, chilling. How's your wiring going? Give us an update. Uh, update on the wiring. So, I did everything that the video said to wire up the inverter. And it said, yeah. press the on button and you'll see the display light up. The display did not light up. So in theory, didn't <laughs> So work. in theory, I did everything right. But in practice, nope. Um, 
But tomorrow, fingers crossed, I feel like I've just talked about this heat shrink for the last four videos, but my heat shrink should be arriving. So I should be able to heat shrink um, all those two old connections. And I think that might be my point of failure at the moment. Once those are on, I can tighten everything up to the proper tight, the proper tightness. Tightness is that a thing? To the proper <laughs> tightness. Um, and fingers crossed, then the things that are meant to work will work. I think there might just be a dodgy connection somewhere. Um, so for the moment, um, I'm just going around and wiring up all the little twelve volt appliances that we haven't done yet. Like, yeah. Uh, will you pass me that box out, please? This one. This one. The light. Light box. Like my little lights. So I'll show you these. These are going to be our bedroom lights. Cool little lights. Ooh, this is also an unboxing video. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little light. This is a little button on the front here. And on the side, they've got a USB. So I'll have one on my side. And Yan will have one on his side. And they'll just mount in like that. And oh, wow, we they will jump onto the USB circuit. Um, so we'll also have a double set of USBs up here because we'll have a charging cabinet for all of our electricals, our cameras, and drones, and blah 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 back there. So at least I can get something done when I'm waiting for this bloody huge shrink. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Hi, Heather. Uh, why don't you flick on those bedroom lights <laughs> there while you're over there? Okay, I can only do one. But... Oh, oh, what does that blue light mean, Yian? That's the USB charger. No way. Yeah, you can plug a USB in there. Let me see. <laughs> wow, we. Blue light. <laughs> what else does it do, Yian? If you press it again, you get a blue and a yellow light. <laughs> wow, we. <laughs> guess what? It moves. <laughs> no way. <laughs> guess what happens if I press it again? I have no idea. Wowza! <laughs> it turns off. <laughs> oh, we're dumb. Uh... Um, this is life complete, guys. They yeah. say you get small, like happy about the small things. We're happy about a light turning on. You never thought that would Very be your life. Happy. Hey guys, look at this. <laughs> oh yeah. That's just the pump you can hear. Pump, no pump. Pump, no pump. She turns my water pump on, <laughs> not the lights. She tried wiring the lights in, she got the water pump to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, don't be mean to me. <laughs> That's not mean. <laughs> it's just the truth. At least something works. <laughs> I'm just happy the pump works. So essentially, for some reason, when I turn on this switch, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> we, don't know we don't know what's happening yet. Uh, yeah. It's 10 o'clock at night. We're going to work it out tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Ian's making a step. Um, <laughs> Technical baby. Yeah, he's doing the real hardcore stuff right here. Hey, get out of here. I've done all the gas and the plumbing. Stuff I want to do is in there. So my excuse is, it's quarter to ten and we can't both be in the same place. We're going to the same thing at once. So I'm going inside to make a cup of tea and Yian's going to finish his step. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Say night night, Yai. Good night, everybody. Okay, I'm starting today with finishing our step. That you don't need to bend like night. that. Oh, okay. Well, can you can see my face all the way up here? Yeah. Right now? No. Okay, I'm starting this morning off by finishing off our step to cover our water pump and everything else. Uh, then I'm going to move on to the composting toilet. Let's do it. That is so bright now. Let's see. Ah. A bit small. Ah, a little bit on the small side. But we'll get in a control panel. Yeah. She's coming together. Gas completed it. Folks, so I've plugged in all of the appliances that we have so far to our 12 volt panel. It's looking like a bloody Christmas tree at the moment. 
um, and now I just need to find all the corresponding fuses and push those in as well. So I'll give you a little update once those are in. When you said, or you put in some into some spreadsheet, was that you want four mil for yeah. the for the one amp stuff? It seemed to me I thought four. over the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Oh, yeah. Working. Just working. Need to tighten it. It's up. a heavy load. Yeah. So any sort of resistance, you know, and that will sense it probably into itself off. Yeah. You would want something thicker. At the moment, powering this. I've got the USB one, which is four mil. That, that's way over the top. I know you read the regs and say it was enclosed yeah. and God, which is fine. But that's regs for 240 volt. Half of this is all 12, which is different. Okay, so that's different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those regs are for, it says in, enclosed. Yeah, clip, clip to the surface. I'm not going to have time to do our whole full inverter setup. Um, but thankfully, with all that help we had earlier, I now know what I can do to get us on the road. Um, so I've stripped back essentially an uh, extension cable, um, which looks pretty good. I've got my live, neutral and earth. And I'm going to put that through this um, breaker panel. And then for this two week journey, onto uh, my four switches and then when we get back I'll do my proper plug sockets and the likes. Um, I ordered, I looked online and I ordered heat shrink <laughs> specific for two aug cable and it still doesn't fit. Guys I hope you understand that you're just never going to hear the end of this bloody heat shrink saga. Um, because I'm going to have to return this to Amazon and try and order four aug maybe. I don't know why it won't fit. It just won't. It just... <sighs> so, um, all of these connections are as tight as they will possibly go now. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that backboard to the wall. And then I'm going to put a battery cover over the batteries so there's no risk of anything sparking or talking to things they shouldn't talk to because that would ruin my day <laughs> because I've been working on this for a pretty long time now um, but yeah the method that we're going to have for charging our batteries on the road is just the battery to battery charger when we get back we'll put the solar panels on um, it would have been nice to have both but I just didn't get around to it today so yeah, I think I've got a few things to tick off on the board. Okay, so next step on our to-do list for me is the toilet. Uh, so I'm making a very simple, as you can see, I've started here. Uh, just a very simple box. Uh, and then I'm gonna make us a kind of homemade composting toilet. So we wanted to do like a homemade one because it was gonna save us some money. We also wanted to do a homemade one because we need a very kind of bespoke size. Our bathroom is a certain size, so we needed a toilet quite small to go in there. So now that I've cut all of those pieces ready to go, uh, I'm essentially just screwing it all together into a nice box. Uh, and what I'm using is just these L-shaped brackets, which make it uh, way easier to kind of screw this together, make sure it's square, and they're really helping reinforce it. Now we just need to put a lid on. Uh, and put the lid on some hinges. And the, just the toilet compartments and we're good to go. Okay, poop update. Poop date. The poop date. We have a poop box made of uh, reclaimed wood. It's uh, chic. <laughs> now this is just wood that we um, cut from the outside of the van so this will all be painted over and it'll look fine um, so ignore the, the marks they're not poop um, are you alright over there? I'm trying to talk over here technically yes sorry sorry noise over here goodness gracious so many noises so my shabby chic bloody heck because we're not getting a toilet separator because they are, I didn't tell you, £70. 
um, for a piece of plastic that essentially has a like a funnel here for pee and a hole here for poop. Um, I didn't want to pay that, so I went and bought this, which was two pound. <laughs> Uh, and I've just put these two pieces of wood in across there and that is now our pee funnel uh, and then back here is our opening for the poops and we'll have essentially a container here that will collect the poop a container under there that will collect the pee, that will collect the pee uh, and that is composting toilet complete for less than 30 quid What's this then? Someone's got a swivel sink to outside What's going on here? Oh, just a little... Oh, caught in the act. Uh, Having a oh. nice shower? Hi. <laughs> Do you like my shower, people? <laughs> and that's yine height as well, so that's better than our yeah, indoor shower in the house where he has to bend over <laughs> just about. It's probably going to get better pressure too. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Pumped. Do your happy dance. Come on, everyone loves the yine happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pumped. <laughs> Hello dudes and duets. It is 11 o'clock here in the Lottie camp and me and my co-driver are very, very, very tired. But we're going to give you a bit of an update before we call it a night. So, here is the bird's eye view of our battery station now. All wired in, all the switches work. I've just put my inverter all back together. Ryan is just mounting this board up properly so I can then mount my inverter to it. I know I spent ages in the last video trying to get my inverter set up uh, horizontally, but I've changed it. Um, so now all the wires kind of go out the top here. Um, I can still see my display and it's got a bit more room to breathe. We need to secure this battery bank. Um, it's not something that I hadn't thought about at the start, but I just wasn't sure how this was all going to look at the end and um, when I started so I didn't really have the foresight to know where to bolt these into but now everything is in place secure the inverter secure the batteries um, and what has been my absolute bugbear by the way over the last freaking 15 minutes these cases for these 300 amp fuses do not stay on won't clip in so any slight movement and I just... Bad, Felicia. Delightful. Uh, but apart from that, we're starting to look good. Last jobs to be done, and then night night. Mm. Should we say goodnight now? Yeah. Bye, everybody. Oh, I was going to say goodbye, too. I was going to say goodbye. <laughs> night, night, everybody. Hey, Yain, guess what you can take? 12 foot panel. Nice. Get up. Oh, you can't do toilet quite yet. No, not quite, but it's basically done. Um, 240 volt system for now, yep. Two more ticks. The step is kind of, well the step's done. Yeah, but not the seating. The seating's That'll not get done. ticked tomorrow. Guys, do you know what? The bathroom can probably get wiped off there because we're not doing that. We're actually doing pretty well. Yeah. We're not going to make solar. We're not going to make bathroom. bathroom. But I think everything else but is going to get ticked. will definitely get ticked. Yeah. Tomorrow. We're into the last leg, into the last couple of hours in our 48 hours. We have added a few additions to the list this morning. Hmm. So we've got back door locks and walls and a gutter. We're in our last few hours now. And secure electric. And secure electric, which I'm about to do now. Because Lottie is going on a trip to town to get all the tanks filled, gonna get gas, gonna get fuel, gonna get water. Hopefully moving into the leaving phase of Operation 48 Hours to get to Cornwall. Do some cycling. Yeah. <laughs> Gutter, check. Complete, kind mm -hmm. of. Secure the batteries, check. having a dilemma. Our toilet is 40 centimeters, but look, 449, 435, 460, the weight. We have... 398. Seashell. We're getting the seashell toilet. We are YouTubers. 
That's right, put a smile on. <laughs> what we get? What did we get? A box. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> nice, witty, witty pun. Oh, and? Oh, and a ladder, so I can actually get into bed. <laughs> and into my house. <laughs> So I've just run this under the vehicle and um, that will go back to my fuse box, I'll connect it up in a minute and I've connected that to the wires that come supplied with the tank so then that connection will live in there safe and sound Let's go to the other end Okay, now that all of the water is kind of plumbed in I've got our little hose plumbed in at the back uh, our sink and tap is all plumbed in and the shower I've got two stop ends on I should, in theory, be able to test our water system, so I'm going to go get the tap, I'm uh, going to go get the hose, and put a bit of water in this tank and see if the pump will push it through. Hope there's no leaks. Right into this switch, turned it on, used our gas detector spray on this fitting, and when there's gas leaking, it bubbles, and boy, was she bubbling. Mm. Um, so Yaya is trying to tighten it up. It's most of our gas stuff we got from Gasset, um, but the delivery time was quite slow, so we needed a piece quickly, so we went to B&Q, um, and we got an 8 mil T-junction. Is it 8 mil or 10 mil, Yaya? 8 mil. 8 mil T-junction. Um, I think it's actually designed for water, but we thought it would do the same thing because it's copper. Um, but it's looking like it's not doing the same thing. We're going to tighten it up and see, and if not, then we need to uh, get one made specific for our LPG. Ooh, spinning you around so I can fit you in here. We sprayed it on again, now it's only coming off out the one side. So, messing around with this pipe for ages, and this is the olive that we're using as our compression fittings. She is squished, mm. so that's why there's a leak there. Yeah, pipe did not Let's go get away. us a new olive and try again. Yeah, I do. Okay, nice. Go on the, both sides of the shit off valve. Okay. Okay. I can still smell gas though. Check yeah. the boiler entry part. Okay, let's try the oven. Is that it's bubbling a bit? definitely coming out here somewhere. Okay, so... <sighs> Update on what just happened. You can use those fittings that were water yes. fittings. That that works. Um, but we've just spent the last, I'm going to say, 40 minutes Easy. tightening up all of our connections. But we're now leak free! Yeah. Well, guys, it's gone past nine o'clock here now. And we're still not done. The toilet's uh, nearly made. The water system is now working. Yayan has completed that. I don't think we even filmed any of that, <laughs> but essentially there was about six leaks in six different places just because we hadn't run water through the push fits yet. So we didn't see which ones had been pushed all the way in. So water now done. Back to the gas. All the leaks on the inside have been fixed, but we noticed that there's a leak on the way into or out of the regulator. Yeah. Uh, out, of the out of the regulator. So that's what we're on now. We did not make it to Cornwall within the 48 hours, but we will make it. Let's go see I. See if that works. Hi. <laughs> What's that, Yai? We got hot water, baby! <laughs> <laughs> ah, really hot. Woo! Nice. 55 is maybe too hot for me. Ah! 
<laughs> yeah! Water? Completed it. Gas? Completed it. Electric? Completed it! <laughs> Alright guys, it's 10 to 2 a.m. Yeah, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> um, and that's us now. Nearly, for the night. <laughs> Uh, going to do a little bit of packing now, get a few hours shut eye. And then jump back in here tomorrow for what was meant to happen today. Head to Cornwall, Land's End, the start line. This dude's going to lace up his trainers and off he goes. <laughs> After four hours of sleep. <laughs> now he can snooze on the journey down as well tomorrow. I'm not that mean, I'm not going to make him drive. So. So she says. So I say <laughs> until the morning where I'm like, I'm so sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we got there in the end. Okay, folks, it is the next day. We did not get up as early as we needed to. We got up about eight and now it's about 10 and we're finally getting on the road. Come a driver. Oh, parked in. Yeah, um, she's ready for a road trip. Excuse me. And excuse me. yeah, next time you see us. Excuse me. Next time you see us, two, three, four, five, <laughs> we will be at the start line of Yine's Challenge. Come on, so, up my see seat. you there. And yes, we do finally make it to Land's End, so make sure you come back next week to see how Yine's run begins. See you there. Mm -hmm.